So President Trump handed President Biden the fastest growing economy in history as the United States came out of a lockdown. Recent economic data, though, shows that growth could be slowing down. Unemployment is over 6 percent and just 266,000 jobs were added last month, far less than the nearly 1 million estimated. Monica Crowley, former Assistant Secretary of the Treasury for Public Affairs, writes in The Hill today, quote, Biden should think twice before destroying the Trump economic recovery. She joins me now. Monica, great to see you again. Thanks for coming in. Uh, very good op-ed. I'm just wondering if it's too late to turn things around. I mean, you look at what's happening with this program to, to pay people to stay home. That's not going to end until the end of the summer. By then, a lot of small businesses could be out of business because they can't compete with what the government is paying out to, in unemployment benefits. Yeah, you know, it's a really good point to focus on small businesses, David, because as you know, small businesses are the backbone of the American economy. They generate about 45 percent of all economic activity in the United States. And prior to the pandemic, small businesses were generating about about half of all of the net jobs created in America. They did bear the brunt during the economic shutdown, and that's why the Trump administration stood up this incredibly innovative program called the Paycheck Protection Program, right. which ended up supporting about 51 million small business jobs uh, through about 5.2 million loans to keep those employees connected to their jobs and keep these businesses afloat. So small businesses will once again bear the brunt of any kind of economic slow down thanks to Joe Biden reversing so many of the very successful and effective Trump pro-growth, pro-worker policies. Well, there are three things I can think of that they're struggling against right now as the lockdowns end. Thank God they're ending, but they're, they're facing some big headwinds. One, inflation. The cost of everything, particularly for restaurants that deal with food, is going up, or construction companies that are trying to buy lumber, et cetera. Uh, they, so inflation is a big problem. Then they have a problem with this paying out the, the workers not to work. You have 8.1 million unfilled jobs. Uh, a lot of that is because people are, are, are staying at home. And, and then you have regulations. Uh, th there are all kinds of new regulations that are coming down the pike, particularly with regard to green energy programs. And you also, by the way, have taxes that are coming. God knows how that's going to affect small business. But the big guys, the big Silicon Valley companies, they're doing great. They're making money hand over foot. They were, they were doing great during the pandemic. Let's face it. That's why California had this tremendous surplus. Silicon Valley is doing great. So we're, we're moving, ironically, Democrats claim they're for the little guy against the corporations. The corporations are in much better shape than the little guys. Yes, and you know, Joe Biden and the Democrats for decades, David, have talked a good line about wanting to support the little guy and champion them and put through economic policies that would support them. And, and their objective has always been, at least stated, to reduce income inequality, reduce poverty, and reduce unemployment. Well, in four short years, President Trump actually accomplished those things, and he did it through four main pillars. He did it through tax cuts, regulatory relief, fair trade deals, and unleashing our great energy sector. And now, unfortunately, it looks like President Biden and the congressional Democrats want to throw all of that into reverse. And those folks who the Democrats claim that they champion the most are going to bear the brunt of any kind of totally pre yeah. preventable economic slowdown. We've seen this movie before, massive government spending, higher taxes to pay for all of it, and radical wealth redistribution. We saw it during the Obama-Biden years, right. and now we're likely to see it in the Biden-Harris well, years. Well, it, it did certainly lead to the slowest economic recovery, at least during since the Great Depression. Uh, but I'm wondering, you, you say they want to reverse the gain made by Donald Trump. I don't think they necessarily want to reverse the train, the gains, but they're, whether it's by design or accident, what they are doing in empowering big corporations is, in a way, making it easier for them to implement these big government plans, which corporations can deal with much better than small companies can. Corporations can deal with the regulations. They have lots of lawyers and accountants and stuff. And Bernie Sanders, when you look at his corporate accountability plan that he was championing, when he was running for president, uh, he may get a chance to implement a lot of this stuff, increasing the stakeholders of, of unions and the government itself in corporations much, much more than it is now. 
Yes, union and government stakeholders. David, you're exactly right. Look, Bernie Sanders calls himself a democratic socialist, which is just a fancy way of saying socialist or, or Marxist. And so none of this should come as a surprise coming from him. The problem is that that's not where the rest of the country is. So if the Democratic Party is going to go down that road, there will be severe economic consequences for the average American, but overall economic growth, job creation, wage growth, all of those things will, in fact, suffer. And it will have political consequences as well. So they mm. better think twice before going down this road. Well, we're, we're already beginning to go down that road. The question is how far we go down before we can turn back. Monica, great to see you. Thank you very much for coming in. Appreciate it. You bet.